Hey everybody, welcome back to Tool for Forces YouTube channel, Captain Nasty's here, and today I'm going to be doing a video I've gotten a lot of requests about, and that's on how to set your graphic settings for VR or for monitors uh, that have high refresh rates and resolutions, and uh, kind of what compromises to make with your graphic settings to hit your target frame rate, and also how to, uh, you know, basically get your VR headset to you know, be hitting its target frame rate as well as much as possible. So before I get started, I just want to say that Assetto Corsa, generally speaking, is can be bound by the CPU for sure. So when you're doing testing, and testing is a big part of getting your graphic settings right, it's really important that you consider that. And I, I like to test with 24 cars on the grid because that's what SRS races, and that, that's generally like how I like to set my graphics up. Um, now, that being said, I do a lot of single player racing with, you know, up as many as 30 plus cars. So I, m my settings are probably a little bit lower than they could be for 24 cars. I'll demonstrate here, but I think this is going to be a good starting place for everybody. So now that the CPU talk um, is out of the way, let's go ahead and uh, discuss the first thing, which is how to actually test your graphic settings. So there is a benchmark available in Assetto Corsa, but I don't find it to be very beneficial. It just doesn't really tax your system very well. I recommend going to Red Bull Ring and picking a field of 24 cars, maybe like GT3 cars or kind of whatever, you know, a variety of different cars, and then, you know, using that to, to try to hit your target frame rates. And if you can do it at Red Bull Ring with Soul and Shaders Patch going, then you should be good to go everywhere else. The key thing is, how do you know if you're hitting your target frame rate? Well, you can see right here this thing called Render Stats. So when you're on track, you just need to go into your apps. It's right here. You just check on render, strat, render stats, and that's how you can actually see, uh, you know, what uh, what your frame rate is. There's other information here about the frame timing, so that's always a nice thing to see as well. Typically for VR, that needs to be under 11 if you're going to hold the uh, maximum frame rate that your headset will produce. At least that's what it is for the uh, Oculus Rift CV1. And then for this main T here, so this kind of gives you an idea of how hard it's not just your CPU or your main thread. So I've researched this extensively, and the, the, what I've heard from Kunos is that it, it's not just your CPU. It's, it's, it's a mixture of CPU and also your, your graphics card, which makes sense here because I think this is only a 24-car race, and it certainly shouldn't be uh, up at 93%. But again, I've got my frame rate unlocked here. It's just doing max, so it's, it's running my video card you know, as hard as essentially as it will go. So now that that's out of the way. Ooh, we can see some cool sparks. Nice. Let's go ahead and jump on into the settings here, guys. The settings video. So this is on my single screen here. You can see I just got everything cranked up because I only have a 1080 monitor, so there's no, no performance issues whatsoever. Now, in VR, you definitely cannot run everything maxed out. I should say that my current PC is very strong. It's an i9900, and I have a 2080. So... Again, these settings, you know, take that into consideration. Now, I'll also tell you what I ran on my 1070 here as well. And you really only need to change one or two things. I think the rest of the stuff you're probably going to want to leave about the same. Um, but we'll get No matter what video card you have, we'll, we'll get into that. So for your full screen here, this is how it displays on the screen. I like to run this at the proper size of my actual monitor because I find I had some issues with actually mousing around in VR instead, of course, without it like that. So... Um, I have mine just at, you know, 1920 by 1080 there. Rendering mode, of course, Oculus Rift. I do like to click limit frame rate, and I have this set to 91 here. I set it for just one FPS over my target refresh rate, which, of course, is going to be 90 on an Oculus Rift or whatever the number on your monitor is. For quality, MSAA, I run it 4X. For anastrophic filtering, run that at 16X. Now, these are ones where if you have a newer headset or a higher resolution screen, you might be able to get away with taking those down. But in my experience, it's definitely had the best look for sure with those, those cranked up like that. World details, I have this set to high. This is one you can compromise on. You can set this down to medium or even low, and you will pick up some frame rate, especially if you're dropping frames in particularly detailed parts of the track. For shadow resolution, I have this on 512 by 512. Like every game, shadows are very taxing, so I try to leave those, you know, Turn, turn down quite a bit. You can see they go all the way up to like crazy high and crazy low. So that's a good compromise for me. For smoke generation, I think everyone should have this one set to minimum just on the start of the race. When there's lots of smoke, it just hammers the frame rate. And going into turn one, if a lot of people lock up, it can really be a problem there too. So I like that at minimum. There's still enough smoke. Show smoke and mirrors, I have that checked. For reflections, this is another one that can use a lot of resources, and again, I have this set at 512, which is you know, kind of an, an 
I'll call intermediate setting, but even with my 2080, uh, this is this is what I run. If you want to increase this, you know, of course that'll, that'll make the reflections look better. Uh, for rendering frequency, I have this set to one face per frame, so you can set this all the way up to like a zillion faces per frame, I think like six, and let's see what it says here about that. Yeah, there's not really a great explanation here on what that is, but I believe that has to do with how many times the reflection is updated, and you'd think that doing that more would take a lot more GPU resources. For rendering distance, I'm not sure why this is on 500. I usually crank this one up to about 1200 or so. It doesn't seem to impact performance all that much, and you won't get those the weird sh shadow casting kind of stuff going on, so we'll just set that to 1300 or close enough to it there. Now, post-processing. This is one of the areas that really has an impact uh, in, in my experience, especially with shaders patch. Definitely has less of an impact without shaders and soul, but with shaders and soul going, the post-processing can really, really uh, hit your, your frame rate. So this is a really good one to pay attention to. So we're assuming that you guys are on shaders patch and soul, so of course you want the soul filter. And you know, for me, again, this is how I run these, and this is with lots of cars on the grid as well. I'll touch on that uh, after I go through this section, but um, th this is something you wouldn't be worried about jumping in a full grid with with these settings. So for overall quality low, glare quality low, depth of field off, motion blur off, saturation 100, no heat shimmering, no sun rays, no FX AA. For mirrors, <clears throat> now if you have some overhead, then this is a good one to crank up before I move on. So overall quality, it, you can definitely tell a difference in the way like light bounces and reflections and kind of all the cool really like extra eye candy kind of stuff. If you turn up this overall quality to high, it does look a lot better, but it definitely will impact your frame rate. So that's a little bit about that. For mirrors, again, 256 by 1024, check high quality here. Now here's the main one that you're going to want to make changes to depending on your video card. So these settings I'm showing you here, honestly, I think are pretty good for like basically no matter what, what card you've got for VR. Now, if you have a high resolution headset, let's say like a Valve Index or an HP Reverb, you can probably just set this pixel density to, to one. And what that means is it's, there's gonna be no super sampling going on. And with those higher resolution headsets, uh, you really don't need to super sample because they've already got high resolution. Now me, I still have the Oculus Rift CV1 and it, it certainly is not high resolution compared to you know, the headsets that are, that are new nowadays. So I'm able to crank this all the way up to 1.5 with my 2080. When I ran my 1070, I would run this right around 1.3 and I would run world details turned down to low. And, um, you know, it was, did not hold 90 frames as consistently even as my 2080 does with these settings you've got here. So this, the, the pixel per display, if you're not able to hold 90 FPS, this is one to start taking down for sure. And again, I think a good target is 1.3 on a 1070. And for me to not have it run, you know, in ASW mode to be in 90 hertz, I, I have it at 1.5. I've heard of people running it higher than that, but I'd be a little surprised if they're really not, you know, getting put into uh, ASW mode, you know, or reprojection, whatever your headset calls it mode. So for Skybox Reflections, 150 LOD bias is just zero, and max frame latency is set to, to auto. So it just means whatever your, your video card defines it as. Let's go over to custom shaders patch because there's a lot here as well. So first of all, I'm on version 1.25 preview 205, which is the most recent one, but it's like over a month old. So that's a good sign. I'm going to say it's it's definitely stable. I've noticed no issues. It's the best performing, the best one for sure. So that that's what I'm on here for this car configs and through backgrounds here, this is all file kind of stuff that I've never really messed with. It just kind of shows you what your content will and will not support for shaders patch. So we're going to skip that and go right into the extensions mode here. So first of all, you want to make sure that your custom shaders patch is actually active. Oh, and we should show you this here as well before I get too into it. So when you go to content on the right and then mods here, make sure that shaders patch and soul are listed over here as installed. So for general patch settings, go ahead and check activate. So you can see here for the UI settings, load car names in the JSON, add prefix to the, the car names. That, I'm not even really sure what the hell that, that does. Um, you know, this is a cool one because it'll if, if you find that your mouse comes on too much when you don't want it to, then you can increase that and it'll make it less sensitive. So that's kind of a cool one. You know, you can hide things, which I don't want to do. Uh, custom air handling for 
Python apps. I, I'm not really even I'm honestly sure what that one is either. Uh, just car cameras. This is not all the exciting stuff. So, but there's two cool things, and I think the some of the coolest things about Shaders Patch are things that people don't really know about. So let me let me just jump into one of them right here, which is disable brake sound. Oh my God! If you drive cars with a brake squeal like crazy, like the DRM cars or lots of stuff, it's super annoying to me, and I really like being able just to switch that off. So that's <laughs> that's one thing I really found a lot of value in. Uh, there's another uh, sound setting here. So if you want to hear just the exterior sounds of the car, you can check this. So uh, use exterior sounds everywhere. So if you're like driving a GT3 car, like the Lamborghini Huracan GT3 is notorious for this, or the Porsche, they have these like really annoying downshift warning buzzers. And I that's that, that bothers me. And the cars actually, you can just get that raspy, cool engine note from the outside. So I, I tend to like to use the exterior sounds everywhere and no you don't get quite as much differential noise or anything like that this is super personal preference as all this stuff is but this is one i kind of have fun messing with especially if i'm driving a car with an annoying downshift buzzer i'll typically uh, check that box and i've got it unchecked here probably because i was driving some vintage cars or something something like that this is the one of the few ones i kind of will come in here and switch off and on everything else i really just don't touch uh for the optimizations you know multi-threaded loading i didn't smoother loading i didn't really mess mess with any of that. I have a, you know, M2 drive here and that loads super fast. So uh, I basically checked all the CPU optimizations except for limit shadows. I was having an issue where shadows were kind of looking really goofy and coming and going. And maybe you've noticed that on some of my previous streams or videos and I, unchecking this seemed to help with that. And I did, I did some other things too, but I think that that's a good one to leave unchecked. For GPU optimizations, again, I just checked optimized uh, meshes. When I had optimized draw order, checked i had some interesting uh, shadow things happening too uh that again i'm not totally sure if it was related to this or that but i i again i, I found that to be better with this uh, unchecked for hot lapping ghost i didn't adjust anything so i don't have a lot of stuff checked here if you go into shaders patch and enable like all this stuff you will absolutely hammer your frame rate and a lot of this stuff is cool like the break this effects that is definitely a cool one if you can get away with it and you're on a single screen or something definitely check that because it works great for car instruments, I don't like this one. So I found some glitches with cars where the gauges would look funny. And so that, that's a kind of a neat one, but I don't have it checked. Uh, for chase camera, chaser camera, I don't even know what that is. I don't, don't, don't chase camera, I don't know what that is. Chat stuff. For extra effects, um, I just found that this one really hit my frame rate. I just activated it and kind of left it on default, you know, stuff. Uh, just checked i think you know like some taa and some other stuff and it just it, it hit my frame rate and didn't, didn't seem like it was a good idea for fake shadows effects this is another one that's actually pretty cool but i did found that it it, it you know it's noticeable on my frame rate so i disabled that one but if you have again if you have the headroom that's a cool one for your camera that's the free camera i'm not worried about that for graphic adjustments here this is another one i played with and i had this on for a while and turned it off and i I just found again that this one, I, I just seem to get lower frame rates with this activated. And it did test these one by one to try to eliminate variables. So one you have to have checked if you're gonna get soul to work here is this lighting effects. So make sure that this is on active for sure. Make sure the brightness is set, you know, I think 100 is what they, they, they recommend for soul. And I think that looks really good there. Uh, one thing that you can do to help performance is cars casting lights. You can, so I have this turned down to 12. <laughs> If you crank this up, it definitely will hit your frame rate. So this is a good way to save a couple frames here. The rest of the stuff is just standard. I don't think I touched the rest of it. For the G27, I'm not even don't know what that is. I haven't had Logitech for a while. For neck effects, this is like a drip, you know, think of it as a camera that's gonna look into the corners for you. This might be cool if you know if you're not using VR, but for me, I, I don't definitely don't want that checked because it would make me throw up probably if it's like looking when I'm not looking. For AI behavior, this is something I have checked just if you want to have uh, AI that can go both directions on like a road course. You need to have this going on. Yeah, allow to drive wrong way. Uh, you can also have this um, AI flood where you can kind of have AI just spawn all around the track. So that's cool for trying to drive in traffic and things like that as well. But, you know, last I was using this, I wasn't doing that. So I don't have those checked. Loading screen is just, you can, you know, it gives, just gives you a little more information, I suppose, on the loading screen. For nice screenshots, this is one I've definitely been playing with because I like to play with taking pictures. And uh, I have, yeah, I think this is all just how it pretty much 
comes the factory. The one thing you want to make sure you have is, is your shutter speed. So you can make a lot of, make your images look a lot different. So it's fun to play with the shutter speed uh, for sure on here. That's something I've spent some time messing with and, and you can make cool blurry and it just changes some cool things. I'd recommend playing with that if you like to nerd out on pictures. So for particles effects, this is one um, that I really just use for sparks. I don't have any of the rest of the stuff checked because particles sounds like it's going to be a big frame rate hit to me. And uh, quite frankly, I didn't test these extra options, but I, again, I'm trying to save, save frame right here. Uh, the new smoke and dust is actually really fun, but it, um, <laughs> it's like too, way too much. Like if someone goes off the track, like you can't see anything. So it's fun to play with. It'd be really cool for drifting. If you, if you drift, I would definitely check the new smoke and um, it probably will affect your frame rate, but you're probably not going out there with like 30 cars on the track drifting, so you can probably get away with it there. Reflections effects. Um, this is another one that has to do with, you know, masking the outside with the silhouette of the car interior, so it just ma makes the shadows in the car look a little bit different. Again, I didn't, shadows equals using a lot of frames up, and I didn't, didn't want to do that. don't want to waste resources on that. Shadowed wheels, kind of the same thing. Smart mirror. This is a super cool one. This is one where if you can get away with the overhead, I would do this one first. So, but unfortunately for me, it just seems to, it just seems to hit my frame rate too hard, which is unfortunate. So what this does, it means when you like move your head around in VR, your mirrors will actually move, you know, accordingly. It's really, really neat, but uh, it, it just cost me too much frames and unfortunately I couldn't, couldn't get away with it. Uh, for smart shadows, you know, altering shadow splits, yeah, this just, you know, seemingly static cameras, orbit camera. I don't really use that stuff, so I didn't, didn't really want to mess with it. That might help in replays or something like that, but might play with that in replays. For the taskbar here, so this is like all your apps and stuff like that. Definitely check this one. This stuff is all stock, but it makes it so it's nice and small and you can get through it easily. It's way better than, than uh, just the standard one. I highly recommend that. Track adjustments here. So, you know, adding amount of spectators, etc. So I don't have this one checked because I don't want to adding a bunch of world details and then like hitting my frame rate unexpectedly. So I just leave this one un unchecked here. Tires, tires effects, it's visually deforming you know, tires, well, okay, so that one's going to, again, that's going to take resources, so I didn't have that one checked for, kind of, it seems like a minor upgrade. Weather effects is one you have to have checked for sure if you're going to be running Soul. I'm going to have this one active, you know, audio here. Uh, I believe this is just all, just all the stock stuff. So here's the coolest one. Save the best, save the best for last. So I absolutely cannot stand when the damn windscreen is super dirty and scratched and totally fucked looking in AC. So I click this to active and remove dirt completely. And for like 95% of the cars, it makes so your windscreen is clean. And that is super helpful for me. So um, that one is, is definitely, definitely worth doing. And that's really about it. We'll just quickly go take a look and I'll show you something in Seoul that I like to do and how to set up a good Seoul race. So first of all, if you're going to Seoul, make sure your weather, you have a Seoul weather pattern. Windy is a really cool one. If you want to get like some really interesting looking clouds, another one I really like is called Broken Clouds. Yeah. And then for the time, so here's another little tip. So at night, your frame rate seems to get hit more than it does in the daytime, which kind of makes sense. So if you want to time cycle a race, if you start with a bunch of cars all starting at the same time at night, it's definitely going to take more of a, a hit on your frame rate than it will if you start the race in the daytime and then finish in the light, night when people are more spread out. So if you want to do something like that, you know, set the, the time to, uh, you know, whatever, something like, you know, this is 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Let's, let, let's set it to 5 o'clock, 1700. And you check, you got to check these three little buttons here. And time multiplier, you can put whatever you want. 60 is way too much. I think 20, you know, 20 is a pretty good number if you want to cycle relatively quickly, but you know, have it not be like a crazy disco party. That's a that's a great one. And uh, I think that's really about it for this video, guys. I know I, I made this because I got a lot of questions. Uh, I appreciate you guys supporting the channel with likes and subscribing. And uh, keep your eye out for more live streams and for more club racing. Uh, as the winter comes, we're going to start to get uh, a more formalized thing going on Thursdays with Tool for Forza and come race with us on Race Department on Wednesdays as well for Seto Corsa. This is Captain Nasty's here, guys. Over and out.